You are listening to the Certified Personal Trainer Podcast, a show by personal trainers for personal trainers. It's time. It's time to become a better trainer, get more clients, and change more and lives. Change more lives. And now, here's your host, the head coach and founder of Fitness Mentors, Eddie Lester. Hey guys, welcome to the Certified Personal Trainer Podcast, episode number three. My name's Eddie Lester, the head coach here at Fitness Mentors, and I'm extremely excited to welcome our guest today. Her name is Anna Victoria, and she has built one of the most successful online personal training businesses. And you know, the topic that I thought about when thinking of her and having her on this podcast is really how to make a difference in the world. So as we get into her whole journey around building a successful online personal training business, we're really gonna understand that you know the impact that you make on a daily basis as a human is so important in your overall journey and it really does impact the world. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight to the podcast. Awesome, so I'm here with Anna Victoria and uh, give you a little intro on her, kind of kind of briefed you, but. I just wanted to hand over the mic to learn a little bit more about, you know, the, the, once again, the, the topic of this podcast is maximizing your impact on the world. And, and kind of with that in mind, I wanted to go ahead and uh, let Anna introduce herself and uh, just wanted to welcome her to Fitness Mentors Certified Personal Trainer Podcast. So welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Eddie, so much for having me. I'm really excited to chat. So yeah, I can go over just kind of how I got to where I'm at today. I still look back and like, how did all this happen? (laughs) So um, I did not grow up and being into health and fitness at all. Mm -hmm. I played sports, but Mm -hmm. you know, nothing too competitively. Um, I had to stop work. I had to stop uh, playing sports when I had to get a job at 16, you know? So, (laughs) um, so I grew up in a small town, Northern California Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, pretty much just health and fitness was not a part of like my family life. And Mm -hmm. I grew up eating junk food and I loved it, you know, (laughs) and, uh, that's, that's all fine when you're a teenager, but then it it eventually catches up with you. And that's what happened to me in my early twenties. I was having health problems and I did not want to work out or eat healthy. It was like the last thing I ever wanted to do, but Mm -hmm. I knew that if I continued down that path of eating junk food and not working out, then my health problems were going to turn chronic. And so Mm -hmm. that is where I said, okay, I'm going to start working out and eating healthy for Mm -hmm. my health. And the physical aspects were, you know, I mean, I'm, I, I don't want to say I'm, I'm a girl, I'm a human being, you know, no one's going to mm-hmm. be mad at any physical progress, but it just wasn't my driving factor. Mm-hmm. Um, at that time, I coincidentally was, I had just moved to China <laughs> with, yeah, my, love it, love boy, yeah, with my <laughs> boyfriend at the time and who's now my husband. Mm-hmm. And um, that's when I kind of had time to, you know, dive into all things health and fitness. And mm-hmm. because I grew up, I'll also say, because I was kind of like, oh, in a way, anti-fitness. I, I looked yeah, at yeah, it yeah. as mm-hmm. like people who back then, this is like early 2000s, you know, mid 2000s. It seemed to me the perception that I had of the fitness industry is that people thought that they were so much better than you. If they worked out, they looked yeah. down on you. And I, and I don't agree. Like, I don't agree that that's how it is, but that's unfortunately what my perception was back then. I feel like thankfully social media has done a lot for the fitness industry and Mm -hmm. helping people realize that there's so much more to it, but, um, yeah. So pretty much I started, um, working out, eating healthy. I started an Instagram page because (laughs) I, (laughs) where everything changed, uh, cause I was living in China, you know, and I had no one to talk to (laughs) and I was anonymous for a year. Okay. Um, Yeah. And so the page was never about me. Like I And, just, and for, for those listening, what, what was that? What was the first page that you started uh, for, for them to, to follow? Yeah. InstaFem Fitness. InstaFem <laughs> Fitness. So, so uh, exactly how it sounded out. F-E-M Fitness after that. All right. Yes. InstaFem Fitness. Yeah. Awesome. Ch- check it out if you're, if you're listening right now. <laughs> oh, it, it's gone. That, oh, it's gone. Okay. It's okay. Gone. Yeah. yeah. That page doesn't okay, okay. <laughs> So, um, so yeah. And I just kind of posted about things that motivated me and mm-hmm. that like helped me. And this mm-hmm. was November, 2012. Wow, but okay, I started yeah. that page. So it was awesome. like 
you know, baby Instagram days. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so within some, some of the, some of the good old days, we'll call it now. <laughs> oh, I totally agree. Yeah. With that. Um, <laughs> so in that year I grew, I can't remember exactly, but I believe it was like 250,000 followers in that oh, okay, awesome, year. Yeah. What, what, what do you just, just, I guess for a, some small action, like what, what did you feel that, that you really, uh, uh, did to to get that quick growth or that, that sort of thing? Well, I mean, absolutely. I had a first mover advantage because mm -hmm. I was one of the only fitness pages, you okay. know? Yeah. So okay. So, so you were kind of new to the space. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And there weren't really the, uh, and many other pages mm -hmm. and I was just kind of reposting content at the time, you know, yeah, okay. other people's recipes and their transformations. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so it's kind of how I got started. But what happened was I shared my transformation and I used the quotation marks because externally it didn't look i had like a body recomp you know like okay. my mm -hmm. my composition changed a lot but i maybe lost seven to ten pounds you okay. know yeah, like, yeah, yeah. not that just, much just a fitness related but, goal of you know three percent body fat you know or right. body fat loss or gain muscle that's yeah awesome right i did i believe i lost nine percent body fat in that awesome. time Great. yeah that's so cool. um mm -hmm. so i shared that transformation photo and i talked a lot about you know while there's some physical change the biggest change is my my health, my mm -hmm. mental, emotional, and physical health. Mm -hmm. And it just blew up. And people awesome. just were like, how did you do it? Tell me yeah, everything, yeah. you know? And that's kind of how, um, do you know about the app called Kick? Kick, I don't know if I know that actually. Oh, it's it old school. It's like okay, okay, old yeah. school Insta people before, before DM, you know? Okay, that's okay yeah, 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 I get People it. would mm -hmm. communicate, mm -hmm. so people would kick me <laughs> and say, oh, I, do, I totally remember that now. Yeah, that, that was, yeah. yeah, what, six years ago plus? Yeah, oh my God. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so people would kick me and say, Hey, how did you do this? And mm -hmm. I would type out my top tips on a list on my phone. I would max out the character count and I would send five of them. And it was like, these are the top things that I did. You know, I just, I wanted to help people so bad because mm -hmm. I understood the struggle yeah. and like a lot of people who are personal trainers, and this is not a negative thing. This is mm -hmm. great, but they're athletes, you know, mm -hmm. or, you know, just, it's kind of um, just in their blood, you know, yeah, and that's of course, yeah. great. Mm -hmm. And there's absolutely a huge market that like people want someone like that, you know, but it wasn't yeah. me, you know, and I was well, yeah, kind, I, of, kind yeah. of talking like the, uh, uh, the reason why you get into fitness, you know, varies so much from trainer to trainer and, and, and right. kind of just, just to point out something that, that you mentioned there is, is you shared yourself yes. with the world. Yeah. And, you know, at a time on Instagram where, where everyone was really trying to, to kind of just, you know, Instagram their life in the sense yeah. of this is all the good things happening and I don't share anything really truthfully about my, myself. Right. And I, I feel from, from following you and your career, that was, that was one thing that really connected with, you know, the people that, that you were, it influenced those people. It, it yeah. helped them. And, um, you know, that really bringing that humanness to Instagram was, was, you know, pioneered by by people like you so that's awesome yeah thank you mm -hmm. i really appreciate that it was mm -hmm. not easy you know because mm -hmm. especially when there's no one else doing it it feels like you know this huge feat and it's you know very vulnerable but um mm -hmm. yeah absolutely yeah. yeah i think that so at this point in time i wasn't a trainer you know i mm -hmm. was just like kind of going on my own journey connecting with other people but because they were asking me for my help um and i kind of gave i would say hey i'm not a trainer you know like this <laughs> is what i did <laughs> And what happened is people would come back to me. They would say, your advice helped me more than any trainer wow. and any doctor. And uh -huh. you know why? Because of the human element, you know, that. because I would say, Hey, I hated working out. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, like I don't want to eat healthy. I mm. love junk food and I still do to this day. <laughs> but the fact that they hear someone saying that and mm. admitting it and yeah. still succeeding, mm. like that is way more motivating than like, boot camp style yelling in someone's face telling them mm -hmm. that they need to lose 10 pounds you know of course so, so. yeah, yeah. And, and and just just i just to go back on something that you said you said you uh uh will say were vulnerable you or you 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 uh by putting yourself out there that that increases your vulnerability yeah. and uh just as like a take home tip uh, when we start to think about actual advice for for the people listening right now being vulnerable and being yourself well let's say being vulnerable uh is being who you are in a sense, right. you know, and, and really expressing how you feel about everything in your life. And especially, you know, in your business, you know, what struggles are you going to? People are going to, are going to connect more with the struggles in your life than they are with the successes in your life. Yes. 
and and nobody your your clients out there or your future clients out there that you're going to connect with they they don't you know hey i got a new client that's a great post but also hey guys uh, well maybe not maybe not to your to your target market <laughs> posting that you that you that you are struggling to get clients but yeah. uh you know really posting about your journey and your and being vulnerable about who you are in every way is a great way to connect human to human and 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 really build a, a following just just like just like Anna did so that's that's awesome yeah, I agree. And also you have to think about, I feel like this is so, it's, this has like been said over and over, but it's really hard to do, but just be yourself because mm -hmm. like that is by far the easiest thing, like the most sustainable, like it's hard to fake it and to keep yeah, up a yeah. facade, you know? So like, don't like just be yourself and mm -hmm. the people that are going to connect to that are the people that are going to stick with you, you know? Rather and and those and those are the people that you want with you too, because it's it's right. the, yeah, just, just like in any relationship in in your life, it's really if if you put yourself out there, you're gonna attract the perfect people for you. Yeah, and, and you know if, if you're if you're putting out something that's not you, you're gonna attract the people that might not be perfect for you. So it's I mean it's it's, it's a great great thought just when thinking about you know being yourself on on any platform, let alone just social media. So yeah, I, and I have to say I did learn something <clears throat> kind of going through because I am. I would say, I don't want to say I'm too vulnerable because I don't know if there's such a thing as too vulnerable, but I, I lay it all out there. I, I, <laughs> you know? I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. But I will say being a personal trainer, I found that there's kind of a fine line of like, there's a point where it's vulnerable and it's inspiring. But like, mm. if you, if you like hammer that too much, mm. there could be a point where people are like, is she okay? <laughs> you yeah. know, like well, well, there's there's also I feel like that there's a good good line like you said between being negative and pessimistic yes. versus being vulnerable. Yes. And and you know it's it's in your own self you need to ask you know am I being true to who I am mm -hmm. or am I focusing kind of externally and and being pessimistic or or negative about someone else or or something in my life as opposed to taking the full responsibility and being vulnerable for being like, I am in charge of my own life and what I create and this is who I am. So, so I, I, I really, I really like that, that you mentioned this, the kind of line in the sand, because it, you know, for those of you that, that might be, uh, for our listeners out there that might be struggling with this sort of element, you, you, are you asking yourself, are you taking full responsibility for, you know, who you are and what you are creating in your current life? Whether, and with is that with uh, you know your current situation that you're unhappy with, or is it you know the fact that you aren't getting clients, or is it the fact that that you have a tough client that's that's really bogging you down? Where where, where can you take responsibility for that? Because as soon as you can take responsibility, uh, you can really grow from it because you can learn. And yeah, that, and that that's the vulnerability that that I think you're you're talking about. That that that's awesome. Yeah, and I mean, and this definitely is a bit more like in a business sense, but I think mm -hmm. that like it's so important. Like, there's gonna be highs and lows, you mm -hmm. know, like there are, mm -hmm. and it's just so important to take everything as a learning lesson mm -hmm. and not as like I failed, it's over, you know, like of course, of course as, I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, like as much as like we've grown the company, you know, so from kind of going back to like what I- Yeah, 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 yeah. I was gonna say, we're, we're, we're getting straight to yeah, the podcast without letting you get, get through your entire journey, but yeah. No, let's, no, let's that's okay. That. I yeah. mean, <laughs> it's, it's kind of a bit of a story. Um, so I created my first, uh, it was called Four Weeks to Fit, my first oh, guides. Right. They were only $9. Awesome. And- uh, Wait, was this yeah. a, a PDF? Uh, it was a PDF, awesome. yeah, okay, I think yeah, yeah. 2014, or it might have been December 2013. Okay. I, there's a lot has happened since then hard yes. to keep it all on track but um so I, I i you know started selling that through instagram mm -hmm. and it blew up and that was again kind of like this you know people started coming back to me saying anna i i love that i got this for nine dollars mm -hmm. but you're selling yourself short like this has that. so much information yeah and that's when i was kind of like okay like actually like i may really be help like helping people like way beyond what i ever expected that's when I kind of uh, created the Anna Victoria page and yeah. brand and I, okay. awesome. yeah. you know, I would shout myself out on Instagram <laughs> fitness, say, oh, Holly, Anna yeah. Victoria, you know. <laughs> love it, love it. Um, it well, because also I realized that on Instagram fitness there, I had no face to that mm. page and okay. people, yeah. you know, when I post about my personal journey, people were connecting so much more to awesome. a person, you know, cause mm -hmm. I was a person. Yeah. Um, and so that's also why I was like, okay, I, I think I can be a lot more effective as mm -hmm. you know, a person in, in the awesome. brand. Um, so uh, I branched off, then I kind of relaunched the four weeks to fit guides. Um, 
I wouldn't say relaunch because they were completely new guides, but the Fit Body mm -hmm. guides, they were a 12 week guide. Awesome. Um, launched that June, 2015. And then December, 2017, we launched the Fit Body app. So awesome. We now, yeah, we, it's kind of gone through, you know, like a whole journey of like the first guides, the second, you know, more robust guides and now the app. And that's like, the app is our baby. It mm. is, you know, it and, and makes, really, really quick for, 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 yeah. uh, for those of, for those listening on YouTube or that, that have access to the internet right now, what, what, uh, what's the website in which your fit body app is currently at? Well, yeah. I guess the, the website and then obviously the, the app is called the fit body app and that's in the Apple yeah, Google Play so store. So, okay, yeah. Fit body with Anna Victoria fit or body fit body app. It'll come up too. It's yeah. on both the, um, app store and the Google play store. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The website is just fitbodyapp.com. Fit body app. And that's two P's I assume, right? Yes. Fit body yes. app. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. That's, that's great. <laughs> so, um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, actually, I was going to say just, uh, just, I learned something from you and this, this is, uh, you know, when, when, when we, when we talk about uh, maximizing our impact on the world, um, the, you know, people, people, because you were being you, because you were, you know, being truthful with yourself and, and, and putting that out there, people helped you to grow in confidence by telling you, you know, you're, you're on the right track. Uh, you know, you're selling yourself short. I love what you're doing. And that, that, I feel like that's, that's a great place to draw confidence from is, is, you know, noticing when you are yourself, how, how the, the world reacts to you. Right. And, and that's also a good, good meter in the sense of, uh, are, are you truly being yourself? Because if you really are, you're going to get positivity. You're going to get support. 100%. Yeah. Um, oh, and then actually just really quick to, to jump yeah. on, on what I, what I drew from you is, is, uh, you know, I, I started fitness mentors in 2014, actually, I meant 2013, no, 2014, April, and uh, assisting people with passing the NASM CPT exam. And we've since, uh, you know, Which I'm so grateful for, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I, and it was one of, one of our first, uh, first uh, uh, students to, no yeah, I, I think it was, because it was, was it 2014 when you got started? Right, yeah, because yeah. I did, because it was for the guy, the fit body guides, and that was June 2015. So. Yeah, okay, yeah, perfect, yeah. So, so before that, we, we uh, she, she reached out to me and said, hey, you are you you have a, a study guide like do you have anything more i think it was and i i i literally that day created uh, the 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 pro package for for nasa or not that day but really put together the uh, the, the the best study program for nasa that we have and and you gave me such great feedback and and, and your support really helped with oh that and, and and that that really helped my journey realizing like wow people are people are really you know liking our education and and cuz a lot of it was you know me for the first time me putting out my voice educating on you know a microphone uh yeah, and having which people I listen loved to it. the <laughs> audio lectures were like my favorite because i'll say like i've never been like a great student type mm -hmm. you know like i just i i'm more of a worker bee you know like i yeah, love okay, yeah. working and yeah. doing something and mm -hmm. sitting reading a book oh <laughs> you know like which i did awesome. that but like the audio lectures just like really made everything just so much more easy to understand awesome. um and that you brought your personality in it too which i really loved you know <laughs> thank you, thank little you. comments here and there so. uh, yeah no and, and then actually to to this day I'm, I'm i'm pulling still pulling from it in the sense of you know i i've been behind the fitness mentors brand my, my whole life and, and people that listen to the audio lectures know that that you know i'm i'm the the, the voice of fitness mentors and and now i'm really you know trying to become uh, that, you know, Eddie Lester is fitness mentors, fitness mentors, Eddie Lester, and putting my face out there, putting my voice out there to, yeah. uh, connect with, you know, my consumers, uh, my, or the, the people out there that, that are looking for help and, and really trying to educate and help fitness professionals through that entire way from, from a forward facing sort of perspective. Yeah. So, you know, you, you, you started that, that forward facing, or, or, or oh. just, just like you said, you started behind, uh, the, the Instagram, uh, name in which you, you, you weren't really, uh, uh, <laughs> help me out here, but you yeah, weren't really, uh, fitness, yeah. you, you, you're be behind the, the, the name of the Instagram account. Right. And then as soon as you went forward facing that, that really, you know, gave you the confidence to grow, 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 grow. And that's, yeah. that's really the transition, which I'm currently at with this podcast, Yay, with, uh, with a lot of, a lot of videos <laughs> that we're now doing in, in the studio here. Um, well, and I understand that's, it's a hard transition. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I was, I was embarrassed to be honest. Yeah. Like that's why I never came out because for those who know me, like knew me, like they were, they would have, I felt like they would have laughed at me, you know, yeah. like yeah. that I was trying to do whatever this fitness thing. Mm -hmm. And I just had to put that aside and be like, oh, well, you know, like if they think that, which no one did, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I know, of course I, I was going to say that that's, that's, you know, these stories that we create in our minds about, yeah. about what other people think or what, or what, you know, that sort of nature really can be a limiting factor. And that's, that's awesome that you're able to push those aside. 
Yeah. <laughs> so um, a few things I will say that I, I learned kind of early on um, in my journey in terms of like scaling and for mm. anyone listening that is a new personal trainer or yeah. trying to build their business. I mean, I feel like this goes without saying, but like obviously create an Instagram account, <laughs> number <laughs> one, it, yeah. you know, <laughs> um, but an email list is something that awesome. mm-hmm. I really underestimated. I did it yep. just because I was like, oh, I think this is something that I should be doing, you know? Um, and, and I will also add, like starting out for me, I never had a five-year plan or like, yeah. I want to build a big fitness brand. Like yeah. I just kind of took each opportunity that was presented to me in the moment and I ran with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and I feel like I'm, I'm now kind of having to, because we have a business, we have mm-hmm. 10 employees, you know, we have awesome. developers and- yeah. I, I can no longer just kind of chill in the moment. We have to strategize and plan yes, things out mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, yeah, so early on with the email list and sending mm-hmm. out like automated emails when people sign right. up. I mean, I guess if, so. you're, mm-hmm. if you're a personal trainer and you have a smaller client group, mm-hmm automated probably isn't necessary you would want it to be more personal you well, know? We, we, in our in our in our programs uh, we have a business and sales course we have our uh, online personal training certification uh, we, we really detailed the fact that that even if you're even if you're sending out an automated email once a week uh, and when we talk about automated emails guys we're really referring to uh, uh, emails that are on a schedule that are sent out from when the person signs up uh, and then either you know every other day or daily or uh, for a certain length of time to kind of interest people in you and uh, your services, we'll say. Um, but really, we we encourage the fact that you, even if it's four emails that are sent out once a week, just to remind people that, hey, you were interested in something that you gave me your email for. And let me just tell you about myself. Let me tell you about uh, what, what, I'm, what I'm doing and, and who I am. And uh, uh, really just trying to build that relationship uh, in an automated way, which because it saves you time. And then yeah. also, I'm sure you're getting into the the, the weekly emails that 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 you send, uh, um, or you know, just just also campaign emails, which are, are one offs in that sense too. Right. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, it's funny because I I had that automation set up with my gut, my first guides, mm-hmm. and with the app. Oh my gosh! Just I mean, there's so much. There's so much in the app world that like it, it fell through the, the cracks, the emails, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and it eventually was like, oh my gosh, wait a minute. Like this is a huge value piece that we're mm-hmm. forgetting. And we kind of had to like re-implement that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so anyways, yeah, it's just something that I noticed that like in the beginning was such a great value piece that we didn't have it for a bit. And I was like, oh, we need to get that, you know, back going, which it is yeah. now. This was two years ago now, but you know, just something that I've learned that I definitely yeah. saw that there was a big difference with. Um, mm-hmm. So Awesome. And if people were interested in, in signing up to understand what your email campaigns might look like, what, where, where would they go? Would they just yeah, go to your, so, mm-hmm. Well, so if you sign up for the app, there's like a box you check if you want right, to receive course. the email. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. one way. Then um, there's on my website, annavictoria.com, which is separate from the app. Okay, that's right. where mm-hmm. I still have my guides up for people yeah. that maybe don't want an app subscription. So okay. mm-hmm. that's on annavictoria.com and you can sign up for my blog right there. Awesome. So currently the emails that I, I have been sending out for the past, gosh, ooh, almost five, five, four or five years now mm-hmm. is weekly newsletters. So I awesome. send out one a week mm-hmm. and it's, I write them and I normally write them in the moment that I'm about to send them out. And I know, mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes it's a little inefficient, yeah. but I personally find that like I can dig so much deeper and find something really authentic that like I want to speak to my audience about awesome. rather than if I'm like, okay, I need to write five emails today. And I just feel like yeah, they don't personally, mm-hmm. I struggle with, with, you know, with that. So, um, I write them in the moment, something that like, I know the community is talking about or mm-hmm. something that's kind of just like going around in the media or, mm-hmm. you know, think what's topical, seasonal, something like that. So, um, yeah, so I send those out. Mm-hmm. I, we also have like my blog newsletter, which we don't send out as often, but yeah. that's kind of a project we're working on right mm-hmm. now, um, that we're going to send those out separately as well. So two emails a week is the goal. Awesome. Awesome. And, um, the kind of just thinking about the 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 process just for a little uh, actionable advice well what what uh, what email service do you use for those that, that are looking maybe for, for an email email uh, automation provider or newsletter provider we use mailchimp mailchimp awesome awesome yes. yeah so i uh, i've actually used three just kind of uh, uh, testing out which ones let work best but we, we've used aweber mailchimp and uh also send in blue it's a newer one that's uh, simplifies it a little, little different structure so 
Um, definitely for you guys out there that are looking to maybe start and grow your email list too, uh, especially those that are really looking to work online, um, you know, collecting emails online, uh, setting up your automations, um, sending those emails, connecting with people, understanding what to even put in those emails. All that is included in, in our, our certified personal trainer course, our online personal trainer course, our business and sales course. You know, th those sort of strategies really take you uh, uh, time to learn. And that's something that, that I really wanted to ensure, especially for those that are really looking to get in that, that online space. You know, how do you collect an email? And uh, what do you do with that email? So, you know, it's a, it's a step by step, in, uh, we'll say education is, is important. And that's kind of kind of what we've been growing with uh, and really helping helping personal trainers with. So uh, that, that, that's kind of that, I just just to kind of give some insight into uh, that sort of email type of, of actionable advice. I love that. Yeah. Um, and then thinking about uh, or kind of kind of going to maximizing your impact on the world. I love so far that, that you've talked about your vulnerability. Um, uh, and then the, you know, the actionable advice around getting, getting an Instagram account, uh, sending emails, collecting emails, that sort of stuff. Um, when you think about your kind of, we'll say impact currently, um, how do you feel that, that, that your journey has, has kind of had, had an impact or we'll say, how do you feel that, that you are maximizing your impact with, in your daily life, in your weekly life, uh, and that sort of thing? Yeah, I would say that by just, you know, I feel like there's two different sides of being raw. Like mm -hmm. one side is sharing the struggles, but another mm -hmm. side is sharing your triumphs. And I think that that's, that's something awesome. that I've had to kind of realize that I need to do more of. You know, mm -hmm. I think that A is like, as women, we tend to not, you know, like boast about like, you know, successes a lot. We don't want to look like we're like overly confident or cocky mm -hmm. or anything like that. And I feel like it's 2020, we need to get over that, yeah. you know? And, and so I have tried to shift from like being raw in that I do talk about like the positive side, you know, and, and mm. in terms of like your workouts and if you're a personal trainer and you're trying to be authentic, like talk about like, it, it's great to talk about the workouts that you struggle with. I think that's mm. so important awesome. to talk about, but also say like, I just did this workout and I killed it. I hit, hit a PR, you know, like I feel amazing and, you know, being raw, like it doesn't always need to be a negative. And I think that yeah, that's of kind of also that line yeah. mm. that we were talking about. Um, I will say personally, I, my journey has kind of changed in the last year where I, you know, we, my husband and I, I've been very public about this, um, mm -hmm. that we've been trying to conceive for two years. You know, mm -hmm. I've been going through infertility treatments and that has completely derailed my journey because yeah. I've not been able to work out, you know, like I my yeah. doctors mm -hmm. have literally told me like, they didn't say stop working out, but they said, lower your intensity, like no more cardio. Mm -hmm. Um, you need to eat more, <laughs> you yes, know? Yes. <laughs> so, um, so that's been another thing that I've shared about that, um, you know, has been hard, but it's, you know, h mm -hmm. helped people. And that's like, I, I was, I was just about to say, I, I, this is in a way, this is a new journey. Uh, yeah. you know, when, when we start to think about our struggles, you know, they, our struggles pull us in, in these directions that, uh, you know, can help others. And that's so cool that, that you're, that you're, that you're vocal about that and able, able to now help others. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, like for me, I, I mean, obviously being a personal trainer is my career. It's what I love doing. Mm -hmm. I love helping women transform their bodies and their, their lives through mm -hmm. that. But there's so much more <laughs> to our oh, life. Oh, oh my God. Yes. You know, and wow. I, I never, ever want someone to feel like as much as I'm a personal trainer and I believe in taking care of your body and pushing it in the gym, there are some times in our life that that can't be the number one priority. It might be number so. three, you know, yeah. and that's okay. Like people need to know. And I feel like personal trainers, like a, I hope that there's like a new wave of personal trainers that recognize this and don't belittle or make anyone feel bad for, you know, going through a tough time in their life and mm -hmm. needing fitness to take a back seat because I feel like it's, it's allowing people to know, letting people know that a middle ground is okay. Like you mm -hmm. don't need to always be hammering your body and mm -hmm. like cutting, you know, being in a caloric deficit nonstop. Like mm -hmm. it's okay to exist in a middle ground because at the end of the day, that is like for, for the long-term sustainability of your life, mm -hmm. that's, what's going to help you, you know, yeah. like, and actually, actually that's, that's a, uh, that's a, that's a good point. In, in my last podcast, I, I had a, uh, 
David Pitts, uh, he's the owner of OffDayTrainer.com. He really brought up brought up the same same thing. And just just to kind of kind of connect, you know, with with experienced trainers, it's 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 interesting how oftentimes uh, the experience of training, you know, overcomes the the what's what's actually you're training for. Yeah. And 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 you know, with 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 clients that are going through tough times, I've I've had myself uh, or clients that that are going through the toughest time of their life. And sometimes I'm their only outlet. Sometimes I'm, I'm their, their, uh, uh, what they look forward to. And maybe it's the only thing in their current life that, that they're looking forward to. So, so uh, j- just like you mentioned at the same time, the, you know, us, we as trainers and we as really people, when, when we're connecting with others, it, it's always about a bigger picture. Yeah. And, and I, I love that you brought that up and it's really, really cohesive with, 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 uh, you know, what, what this podcast is about too. So yeah. But I think that you made a great point because how you said, sometimes people, you know, look forward to you like that. That's, you know, the, the only positive in their day that is, mm-hmm. that that's so important because not every struggle means that fitness needs to be on a back burner. Mm-hmm. Sometimes struggles mean that that is your outlet, you know, yeah, and that's you. amazing. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like, you know, in today's day and age of social media, like self-care is a huge topic, mm-hmm. but it's almost like they kind of put it in a box of self-care almost. It's like avoidance, you know, they're mm-hmm. like, oh, self-care, like don't do anything, call out sick, just stay in your room, watch Netflix. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> that's not really self-care to me. That's, that's avoidance, you know, uh, and I that's see, all- see, yeah problem worse. Mm-hmm. Self-care a lot of times is taking care of your body, you know, yeah. taking care of your health, um, you know, and doing the hard things. I when, just did a post about this yesterday. So, awesome. no, and um, I, would even, I would even add in there taking care of your mind as well. I mean, yeah, yeah. 100%. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be different for every person. You know, Absolutely. sometimes that does mean hiding away and watching Netflix for a day. Yeah, like, oh, of course. I, 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 I'm, I'm with that too. Where it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's Oscar season right now. So I'm, I'm, uh, right. I'm, I got all the, all the, uh, the movies dialed and about like 30 movies that I got to catch up on before, <laughs> before the, the Oscars. But that, that's my right. thing is this time of year. But <laughs> yeah, no, same for like, we love watching shows and everything. And um, so, you know, and I'm not, so I'm not knocking that, but it's mm-hmm. like, you have to <clears throat> kind of be your own system of checks and balances of when mm-hmm. that's no longer serving you, when it's actually just turning into a cycle, you know, mm-hmm. where you're, you're no longer helping yourself heal. Yeah. So um, yeah, I feel like it, bit of a tangent, but I just oh, no, think, no, it's, no, you know, it's, it's important to know that fitness doesn't always need to be, you know, something that you need to run away from in tough times. Like you can mm-hmm. run towards it. It just, it depends on your, your specific case. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, like in my specific situation, I was told by doctors to tone it down, you yeah, know, and so was. like, that wasn't my choice. And it's definitely been hard. And I've noticed like my energy levels dipping, you know, and mm-hmm. like my, I don't want to say my mental health suffering, because that's a very serious thing. But, mm-hmm. you know, there are little elements here and there that have been, you know, hard to cope with without working out. But anyways, of course, yeah. um, no, I, no, just, I, I love it. Thank you. As, as a personal trainer, I think it's so important to, to talk about these moments. And mm-hmm. I think that's what sets trainers apart is talking about their story. And, awesome. you know, I, I don't want to say that all workouts are the same. They're not, but you know, mm-hmm. it's 2020. Like we, the fitness industry is as much as we're still learning a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, it's evolved so much to the point where, you know, as long as you're moving your body mm-hmm. and challenging yourself, you're going to get results. Also being in a caloric deficit, I'm very big on nutrition, <laughs> you know, if, it, if yeah. aesthetics, and fat loss is your goal. It's not mm-hmm. for everyone, but, um, you know, that is kind of, as long as you're, you're, you have those two pieces down, um, the rest of it is, is the person, you know, that's motivating mm-hmm. you. And so for personal trainers, like, you know, again, being yourself, attracting mm-hmm. clients that are going to really connect to you and that you're going to connect to as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's, that's what sets you apart. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So I think it was you that was saying right before uh, we got on this call that, that, uh, you know, fitness as far as reps and sets that that doesn't really change too much there isn't a lot of a ton of advancement as far as sciences or things like that uh, but or yeah what, and then what, what were you saying as yeah far as i was saying that no one's reinventing the wheel really okay, yeah. mm-hmm. you know like it and it really comes down to what i've noticed is that is able to help people be more successful on their journey is mm-hmm. how they're able to connect and motivate them you know yeah. like the workout piece and nutrition i feel like 
I would hope anyways, that the, the large majority of people have it down, you know, yeah. as far as personal trainers and their offering. Mm -hmm. um, and it really comes down to, are you able to, to captivate them, to keep them motivated? Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's, again, that line, like it's one side being vulnerable, but on the mm -hmm. other side being motivating, saying, hey, I like to call it robot mode, you know, like yeah. just like, just don't think about it. The more mm -hmm. you think about it, the more chances you give yourself to make excuses, like just mm -hmm. get up and go. Like you have to also have that very actionable piece, you know, yeah. so mm -hmm. kind of, kind of both of those sides. So yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, I, I guess kind of, kind of to wrap things up, uh, staying on topic here with, with kind of everything that we've gone over. Um, you've given a lot of actionable advice as far as, you know, I, I really feel like this, this podcast will really turned out to be so, some, something around, you know, maximizing your impact on the world has uh, everything to do with being yourself. So I guess the one last question I want to ask you is, uh, how do you see your future as far as maximizing your impact on the world? What, what, what do you see kind of, kind of your future looking like in, in, in that sense? What, 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 what are you uh, uh, focused on in that sense? Yeah, that's such a great question because like I said, I, I haven't always been the best at planning, you know, like yeah, five-year so. plans or mm -hmm. strategizing. I mean, no matter what I do, like it's definitely going to be in the fitness realm, but I could see myself branching out to, mm -hmm. you know, business and entrepreneurship and, mm -hmm. Um, you know, just helping women in their everyday lives. So, awesome. um, you know, we're going to be starting a family soon, you know, yeah. so like <laughs> kind of more that piece as well. But like, mm -hmm. no matter what I do, like I have to be fulfilled knowing that like I'm helping people, you know, awesome. and yeah. the, this being a business, it's just, it's the cherry on top, you know, it's not the primary focus. And I, mm -hmm. and I feel like people probably say that, but like it truly truly isn't like it's I just want to help people and connect to people mm -hmm. um you know my husband and the the team can worry about the rest of the business yeah, I love probably, it, love you know? it. <laughs> um so yeah just um helping women um I could see us possibly expanding to men in, in the future but awesome. we would bring on a male partner obviously you know I I would <laughs> that. um I'm sure I could but I would want it to be you know more authentic someone that they could of course with you know, that have gone through yeah. a similar journey. So yeah. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> and then, and then last bit, what, what is, what is the last piece of advice or maybe, maybe one piece of advice just, just to kind of end on, um, around, we'll say trainers that are interested in, in taking their business online. We're kind of moving to that next step. Maybe, maybe you've had a few years of, of training and, and now you really are looking to, uh, branch into the online space and help more people. Because yeah. you've, you've been successful at helping so many people. Like, what, what, do you, what is your advice for, for that sort of a situation? I would say just be sure that what you're bringing, first of all, consistency, you mm -hmm. know, like okay, with sharing it. on Instagram is so important because, mm -hmm. and I've struggled with this in the last year of my infertility journey. I've kind of gone MAA sometimes mm -hmm. and I, you know, notice kind of the drop off in time mm -hmm. because if you're not posting and bringing content, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> if you're not posting and bringing content, someone else will. You yeah, know, there's, so. there's a lot of people, market is very saturated yeah. right now. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's not, that doesn't have to be a negative thing. You just have to be again, authentic, mm -hmm. you know, vulnerable, but bring value, you know, bring awesome. something that you've learned and be excited about it, you know, and I don't assume though. that everyone knows everything because I feel like that's something I've also noticed is that like, sometimes I don't share about the basics anymore because mm -hmm. I feel like my community is so far along, but like, there's always new people joining and following that may yeah. not know some things. And so, um, yeah, so just, I would say, well, yeah, I, um, I, I thought just to summarize what I think you said is it's content creation and consistency. Yeah. I, I, I love that. Cause that's, that's something that, that we're big on in all our courses is, is, you know, when, when, and kind of actually even bringing back a little bit to, to what you said, you said, you said you focused on women yes. and, and having a very specific niche that yeah. you're then creating that content for, and you're consistently putting that out is only going to draw people towards you. And once again, you know, and even going, going one step back, the vulnerability being yourself, you know, with that content. So that, that is, that is awesome advice. And I'm, I'm, I'm so excited for, for the people listening to, to really, to really take that to heart and, 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 you know, set themselves up as they, you know, start their next journey, which might be in the online space or in, in some other form. So, so that is awesome. Well, I, I, I really, really appreciate you taking the time to be here. Uh, I guess one last thing, if you wanted to, if people wanted to learn more about you, could you go over maybe just your, your Instagram accounts and your websites one more time? Yes, of course. So Instagram is at Anna Victoria. Okay. Um, I also have a YouTube account, YouTube slash Anna Victoria. Awesome. And that's two um, ends with Anna, correct? Two N, yes. Two, two N's, awesome. Perfect. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then fitbodyapp.com for the app. 
or annavictoria.com for the guides and a bit more about me. Um, and yeah, that's about it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, Tay, hey, thank you so much for taking the, the time to come on here. The, the, uh, the impact that you are having on the world is huge. And, and we're, we're just so excited to, to learn from that. And, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still learning from you as well. So, so keep, keep up the great work and, and we will, uh, connect again soon. And I'm, I'm sure we'll have you back on the podcast uh, as you continue with your other jobs. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Eddie. <laughs> All right, guys. And uh, just a heads up, if you are uh, still with us listening, uh, definitely share this on your social media. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, share this with, with a friend, that sort of thing. Follow us, hit subscribe up there. And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you on next week on the next podcast. All right, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye. As always, thanks for listening to the Certified Personal Trainer Podcast. You can learn more about fitness mentors at fitnessmentors.com. Be sure to share this podcast on social media. And remember, we are here to help you succeed. Help you succeed.